Hi, welcome back from Morning July with Volleyball 101. I'm here with Eric Ulgenfritz from Human Movement Lab. And uh, we're doing some movement stuff to help volleyball players uh, get better on the court. So uh, what's our next thing? All right, next thing uh, posture we're gonna work on is called half kneeling. Um, it's basically just being on one knee with the other foot out in front of you. Okay. And it's honestly, I can't say enough how important this posture is basically for all athletes and for anybody you know throughout the lifespan. It's it's one of the best ways. Basically, there are three standing positions that we are ever in, which we've discussed in some other videos. You're either in symmetrical stance, split stance, or single leg stance. So being in the position with one hip in extension and one hip in flexion is just a constant for every human being. I mean, sure. that's how you move around. You're always in single leg stance and your hips are in different positions. So as we were talking about core stability is pattern specific, being in half kneeling like this puts you into hip extension on my right and hip flexion on my left. And because I'm not standing up, it eliminates any compensation that could happen at the foot, knee, or ankle. And it also more or less paralyzes certain muscles that typically we use to compensate for all the time when we're standing. So right now, I cannot use my hip flexors, quads, or hamstrings to provide stability to me right now. Now, most everybody when they start out, you're gonna feel fatigue and a lot of activity and, and, and just kind of burning and, and a sensation down the front of your extended hip. And that's just basically your brain asking that area for help because that's what typically it's works in a standing position. So I can't say enough how important half kneeling is for everybody. If you have an asymmetry, you have motor control issues in half kneeling, you're 1000% going to compensate every step you take when you're standing up. And most people have a difference. They have one side that's better than the other. So basically, go ahead, go ahead, put your, yeah, put your right foot out here. Now, de de depending how capable he is at staying balanced, you can determine where his front foot is. Ideally, you want to end up where you're basically on a balance beam, where his, his knee, rear foot, and front foot are all on the exact same line. So, but for now, let's go ahead and keep you a little bit staggered. Now, if, now right now, what he's doing is typical of everybody starting out because we're all so used to doing hip flexor stretches, but you actually want to back your hip up till your femur is totally vertical. So now you're not hanging on your hip flexor anymore. You yeah. are getting, yeah, so I can tell you feel that. You're much less stable now oh, it's crazy. because you can't use it. So stay tall and just resist the urge to lean forward. Keep your hands to your side. And now, so this is an example. Your core is meant to resist movement. So just because he's stationary, you would see this and think that there's not a whole lot going on. But you can spend 30 minutes doing half kneeling variations and just be fried by the end of it just because of how much kind of reflexive stability is required. And now it's just so crazy, I can just feel everything firing and I literally feel like I'm swaying right now. Yeah. And it's you, like, it's such a weird motion that you guys, I'm working out a lot, but I literally feel like I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm like, catching myself. Well, it, what's gonna happen a lot, especially once we get you more narrow, you're gonna have tons of little kind of flailings that you're gonna have to correct the whole time. Yeah, I feel it, that's crazy. Yeah, so that's good, you're keeping that femur vertical. Now all I want you to do- I can do feel exactly what you spoke about in terms of this wanting to fire right now. Yeah. Like this area right now is going, hey, what's up? Yeah, it's basically your brain talking to your quad and hip flexor saying, hey, I thought we had a deal. And it's saying, I'm trying, but it's not doing anything. So eventually you do enough half kneeling, your brain is forced to adopt a more efficient strategy, which is actually used the reflexive stabilization of your inner core and actually your glutes and hips. That's what, that's what should be providing the stability in this position. So basically now all you're going to do, let's put this on your back, grab it with both hands. Like this? Right? So stay tall. Make sure you don't lean forward, keep that femur vertical and just rotate as far as you can stay relaxed that way and just hold it right there. Keep breathing normally, stay tall. So again, he's not moving, but there's a whole lot going on, and it's a lot more tiring than it looks like. Let's come back to the middle, and then back again to the other side. Okay, let's do one more each direction. Stay tall, keep breathing.
It's so simple and it's just yeah. amazingly deceptive. Yeah. So basically what I'm doing by doing this is I'm getting the correct muscles to fire and I'm actually engaging my core correctly versus engaging a bunch of other garbage. That right. be working. It's, it's, it's the perfect, it's one of the best positions ever because it doesn't let you compensate with the typical compensators. And please don't make the mistake of thinking that, oh, I've got a 40 inch vertical or oh, I just got a scholarship or oh, I've been a professional athlete for however long. That that somehow means that because you're performing at a high level, that you must not have these sorts of issues. I can't tell you how many people have just mind-blowing asymmetries um, and they're and already performing well with these problems. So when you take these problems off the table, it's like you watch people get to the level where they should have been almost the entire time. Sure. And you'd hate for somebody to yeah, miss out on a switch. Or yeah, yeah, just switch. Yeah. Uh, same thing spot there. Yep. You get set up and then I need to stick. So scoot this foot over a little more. Make sure you're still straight. Don't lean forward on that hip flexor. Point your back toe away from you. I didn't mention that before, but you don't want your angle to be dorsiflex behind you because you don't want that exactly. angle and foot to be helping your hip out. You want all this stability to basically come right now from his right hip. So you want your toe to be pointed. If you're doing this at home, just grab a pillow off the couch and just line up on the floor. It's a great posture because you don't need any equipment. Just amazing. So then lean back a little bit more. There you go. It's just amazing. I can feel it. There. Now, that's the perfect leg position right there. You were leaning forward before, and then it didn't feel like it. Yeah. So now let's go ahead and try this. And there are a bunch of other variations of things we can do in half kneeling. This is just one of them. Chopping and lifting is probably the one of the most helpful things to do, but we can't go right to that. We have to start out just with basic movement and stability first. It's so amazing, I'm more stable right now. I can yeah. actually feel like I could fall over. And you feel, yeah, so those wobbles actually happen all the time. Like I'm surprised they're just starting with you, but you're basically gonna almost fall over and have to catch yourself. Yeah. And that's what your core is meant to do. Reflex stabilization is not conscious. It's just operating on autopilot, not to create movement, but to prevent movement. You really want movement in your legs and arms, but your your ideally your torso is in neutral spine position almost all the time, no matter what you're doing. So you feel a little bit less stable on this side than the Without other side. Without a doubt, yeah, significantly. Yeah. Feel like. So it's showing up already when he's just rotating. But the minute we put some external force and get him doing some cable chops, where he's pulling directly from the side and he's either pulling down this way or he's pulling from the ground and he's pulling up this way. I mean, you really see just blatant asymmetries. And clean, no. cleaning up the quadrant or two that is the weakest quadrant of the four, whether it's chopping from this side or lifting from this side or chopping from this side or lifting from this side can just do... I just want to make sure my leg is a lot cheating. Yeah, that's straight. Stay tall though, keep your head pushed up to the ceiling. There you go, keep breathing. <laughs> I am. Yeah. So if you've got an asymmetry in half kneeling, you're going to be constantly compensating on your feet. So the more volleyball you play with an issue this fundamental, you're just going to constantly kind of almost get worse, I would say. The movement screen will tell you whether or not moving more or playing more is going to make you better or worse. And if you've got a screen like Andor's, you basically want to clean this stuff up as quickly as possible because if he was going to play five days a week for three weeks, it's almost guaranteed that he's going to be kind of breaking down gradually towards the end. But if your screen is clean and you maintain all these basic fundamental movements, you could feel just as good at the end of a three-week period as you do at the beginning. I mean, I'm 34. A lot of my friends talk about how they just can't play three days in a row anymore and they associate it with age and it's really more related to movement pattern deterioration than it has anything with age. <laughs> so that's good. We can take a break and we'll do some half kneeling chops for this in a minute. Wow. Okay. Um, really, really interesting. It's it's so humbling to be honest. It's it's really humbling. You know what I mean? It's humbling. Uh, and I'm not. I've been training for a while now. I feel like I'm like in really good shape right now. You know. So it's it's very humbling. 
And if I'm experiencing this, I know 99% or 98% of you guys are experiencing the same thing, you don't know it. Okay, uh, so find out more information, visit humanmovementlab.com or we've shot some great videos, also information on the screening um, and also more of the exercises at volleyball101.com.